Attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi everybody, this is Kara, one of the deans here at eLearning U. Welcome to today's session. Just before we get started, I know some of you are attending for the first time today, so I just wanted to let everyone know that the session is, session is going to go for 50 minutes, and then we will do a question and answer period with our speaker at the end for about 10 minutes. So if you do think of a question during the webinar, feel free to type it in the question box on your screen, and we will get to it at the end of the session. Today's webinar is Social Media is Just 25% of My Job, Help, and our speaker is my co-dean, Susan Sweeney. Susan is truly an expert when it comes to internet marketing. She's a consultant to many businesses in the tourism industry, and she is the author of eight books on internet marketing, including 101 Ways to Promote Your Website, now in its eighth edition, and recently translated into German, Spanish, and Chinese, and Social Media for Business. Susan is a frequent speaker at travel, tourism, and internet marketing conferences worldwide. I'll pass things right over to you, Susan. Thanks very much, Kara, and welcome everybody to today's program. Um, a lot of people tell me that uh, they're just way out of their league when it comes to managing social media. They wear many hats. Uh, social media marketing is just uh, is just mm -hmm. one of them. It's um, it's a challenge these days when uh, you've got to when you've got a small medium sized business and uh, you you know you've got to do the um, traditional marketing the online marketing the website updates the social media um, there's just so many social media channels these days uh, and something new every week it seems that is either uh, a new social media channel or changes to existing social media channels. Um, so many conversations going on and it's just a, a real challenge for anybody trying to uh, to manage social media. So what I'm going to do today is hopefully um, kind of set things uh, into perspective for social media uh, management and as well at the end I'm going to give you some uh, tips, tools, techniques and resources to be able to uh, manage your social media a little bit better. Um, there's uh, with everything there's a, a formula for being successful in social media and basically to be successful in social media you need to have three things uh, you need to have a social strategy and uh, you know that's that's basically your plan and once you've got that plan done right the other things sometimes will fall into place um, so you've got to have that social strategy you have to have your social setup, your social media setup done properly uh, for all your various social media venues that you're choosing to participate in. And then you've got to have your social media management. That's the day-to-day, -day, the uh, posts that you do on your wall, the advertising that you do within social media, the boards that you de develop and, uh, and what you post to those boards and Pinterest and those types of things. It's your day-to-day -day management of your social media. So let's take a, a little look at this. Uh, we'll go into a little bit deeper. First of all, the social strategy. And really, this is the critical piece. If, if you've got this done right, um, then the rest becomes a whole lot easier. But it's the most difficult part to, to get done right. Um, so your social media strategy or social media plan. And uh, when you're developing that social media plan, whether you do it yourself or whether you have somebody develop that social media strategy for you, it's always very important to take into account the amount of time that you have to devote to your social media or the amount of time that your team has if you're going to allocate it across different members of your team. So you've got to take into account the time. It's one thing to develop a plan, but uh, an entirely different thing to do a plan that, is, uh, that will work for you. So you've got to take into account the amount of time that you've got to devote to it, uh, the capability as well of you or the members on your team, if you've, if you've got a few people that are going to be doing these things. Uh, how knowledgeable are you on um, you know, leveraging and making the most of the social media that you are participating in? And then the third thing is whether or not you have a budget. And you know, if you don't have a budget, um, there will be certain things that you can't participate in, like Facebook advertising and, and those types of things. Um, but, you know, if you don't have a budget, not a problem. You can do other techniques uh, to achieve your objectives. One very important thing is that your social media strategy should be documented because what doesn't get documented doesn't get done. So very important that you document this strategy. Now, when you're developing your strategy, you always start with your objectives, target markets, products, and services. 
And really, this is true of so many things online. You know, when you're developing your website, you start with your objectives, your target markets, products, and services. When you're developing your blog, again, you start with your objectives, target markets, products, and services. So when you, um, uh, when you and your team brainstorm about these objectives, target markets, products, and services, uh, it's something that you will be able to use uh, in other aspects of your marketing online. Um, now, when you start with your objectives, target markets, and we'll get into this in, in a little bit, um, but there are going to be lots of different options, lots of different ways for you to achieve those objectives. So what you want to be doing is looking at what your options are. And you're going to be looking for, um, how can I achieve this particular objective the fastest way possible, the easiest way possible, and the cheapest way possible? Um, you want to, you know, don't make things difficult for yourself. And um, then also when you're developing your social strategy, um, you know, don't forget about your traditional channels. Uh, so many people today just kind of jump on the, the social media bandwagon and they think that social media is going to be the, um, the answer to everything or that you've got to find the solution within uh, social media. But if, uh, if you're, some of your objectives may not require social media, some of your objectives may very well be uh, able to be accomplished in, with tr traditional channels. So again, just keep your options open in terms of how you will uh, achieve your various objectives. Now when you're developing your list of objectives, every one of you is going to have a different list of objectives. And you want to get as, uh, as niche and as narrow as possible. You're going to have some objectives that are very broad, you know, things like uh, building a community of fans and followers. Um, I mean, that just makes sense. You need to have a strategy on building your fans, followers, subscribers, whatever they're called in the various social media channels. Um, because, you know, if, you are, if you've got a Facebook page but you don't have any fans or people who like your page, you can post, uh, you know, tons of great content, but nobody's going to see it. So very important that in your strategy you do have a, uh, a, plan, a plan of attack, you know, how you're going to grow that, um, that community that you have online. But other objectives, you know, it might be that you want to uh, increase your permission-based uh, database, your e-club database. Uh, it might be that you want to uh, advertise some specials or promotions. And here's where you get into some narrow and niche. It might be that you want to, uh, you know, sell out on Valentine's Day or you want to uh, double the amount of business that you do through uh, social media for Valentine's Day. So you will get very, very specific with some of your objectives. Uh, but again, you know, some are general. We want to sell more in the off-season. We want to uh, increase our exposure through videos. There are lots of different objectives. And an important one, and one that will be growing in importance, is improving your search engine positioning, both um, for search within the social media venue, but also for your website. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about, uh, about how you can accomplish that. You also want to identify all of your different target markets. And, you know, in the travel and tourism industry, there is no such thing as a visitor. You really want to narrow down and, um, you know, narrow down that, that target market because each one has different needs, wants, and expectations. And you will use different techniques uh, to achieve different objectives with the different subsets of your target markets. You know, is it a, a family traveler, a business traveler, a meeting traveler, a tour operator, uh, somebody who's planning a, a wedding, somebody who's doing a multi-generational uh, trip. So you really need to um, define your target markets in terms of all of these different uh, niches. And then with your products and services, again, every one of you has a number of different products and services. Uh, the destination marketing organizations you know, are looking at promoting uh, golf in the destination. They're looking at promoting um, the hotels, accommodations, attractions, so many different things. And the individual, you know, hotels, again, have many different products and services that they will be promoting through social media. Uh, you know, it could be their conventions and meetings or their tour business. Uh, it could be that um, they're, they're trying to promote the various types of accommodations, the restaurants, their, their golf, you know, there are many, many different products and services that each one of you has. So what you need to do is once you've got your objectives, your target markets, and your products and services defined, uh, then you take each objective and 
if you can, you take each objective and then you say this objective for this particular subset of the target market to come up with the tactics that you're going to use to achieve that particular objective. So the, the first thing that you do is you take an individual objective and then you take a look at all of the different social media uh, venues, the social media channels that you could use to help you achieve that particular objective. And uh, this is just um, uh, a little piece of, of one of our social media strategies. But, you know, the objectives are listed down the left-hand side. And then as you go across, these are all the possible uh, social media channels that you can use. And you'll notice that there are a number within Facebook. Uh, there are a number within LinkedIn that can help you achieve your particular objectives. So you just start very broad for each objective where could I possibly look at um, doing some promotion to achieve that particular objective? And of course, there's more than Facebook and LinkedIn, and every day this is growing. Uh, most organizations in the travel and tourism industry now uh, certainly have a YouTube channel. Uh, they've got a Pinterest account. They've got a blog. So you need to take a look at all of the different possibilities. Now, once you've determined um, where you're best to take a look at for achieving that particular objective, let's say that it's Facebook as an example, then you need to drill down and say, okay, within Facebook, which element within Facebook is going to be the fastest, easiest, cheapest for me to achieve this particular objective? Um, so within Facebook, it could be on your page, it could be that you're going to you know, have some um, comments on, on your wall or you're going to do some promotion on your wall. It, but it could also be that you're going to do some Facebook advertising. It could be that you're going to have uh, an event. It could be that you've got um, an app, what we used to call tabs, uh, that you've got an app specifically to help you achieve a particular objective. So for example, if your objective was to increase the number of people in your permission-based database or your e-club, you could have an app that relates to your e-club and uh, you know, try to achieve that, that objective that way through an app. So you need to drill down. You're looking at on an objective by objective basis, uh, which particular social media venue and then which element within the social media venue is going to be the best uh, approach for me to achieve that particular objective. Um, the next thing that you need to do for each objective is determine what specifically is going to be done uh, to achieve that particular objective. And, you know, this is where we get into so many different options. Um, it's, it's always important, though, to recognize that you need to diversify what you do in every single one of your channels. So you want to make sure that uh, you do, that you make sure that you are doing some posts that are going to be very engaging. Uh, the more you can create some interactivity with your uh, you know, fans or followers or subscribers, uh, the better off you are. Because you know, in, so in uh, Facebook, on your wall, if you post and nobody comments or nobody shares, you've really lost uh, you know, a huge part of the opportunity that you've got within that particular venue. So you really need to diversify the content that you're producing there. You know, some is going to be engaging that you're going to get them to, uh, you're going to use some rich media to grab their attention and get them to stay there. Uh, some you're going to post a question perhaps, or you might have a, a contest to create some interactivity so that when they comment or when they participate, uh, you're getting the leverage of the exposure to all of their friends on their wall. Um, sometimes you're just going to be publishing and letting people know about a particular event or something that's going on. Um, you know, so there are lots of different ways that you can uh, have your content made available. And for some of your objectives, you're going to have uh, a number of different ways to achieve, and you will probably use a number of different tactics to achieve that particular objective. Um, so growing your fans, uh, growing your people who like on Facebook, uh, might be one of your objectives. But the way that you accomplish that is going to be very multidimensional. You're going to uh, you know, link it from your website or blog, so that's totally separate from your social media. Uh, you might have a Facebook ad and have a like within the ad. Uh, that's a way that's you know, very popular these days to, uh, to grow your likes. Um, it might be that um, you know you really engage your fans or people who like and get them to interact so that 
uh, any comment that they have is going to appear on their wall for all of their friends to see. And people hang out with like-minded people. So uh, you'll be very strategic about the type of content that you want them to, con to comment on. Um, you know, it might be that you've got uh, fan-only uh, specials, deals, contests, those types of things uh, to encourage people to, uh, to like your page or to, to become a fan. Um, so there are lots of different ways, and like I say, some of them will be uh, in social media, some of them will be in the traditional channels, and even within social media, they will be, uh, you know, you've got lots of different options for achieving that objective through different elements within the different social media channels. Um, so, you know, you're not always going to have just one tactic to achieve uh, a particular objective. I mean, here's a here's a, a little example, one that I use fairly often. Um, it's it's a great one. It's a whisper campaign, and so what um, the um, Affinia Hotels did was they wanted to grow their their Facebook fans or people who like. And so what they did was they had a whisper campaign, which basically said that um, you know when you check into our hotel, you whisper a particular phrase. And then you'll get free internet access at the hotel for this particular month. Well, not only did they have the whisper campaign, but they leveraged it with a uh, press release. And so their press release or their story appeared in USA Today in the travel section. And uh, so you can see the amount of exposure that they got for this particular campaign. And I understand it was, it was uh, very successful in helping them to grow um, the, the people who like their page. Um, you know, here's a here's one that that uh, an example of how you can create some good interactivity. So, can you name this Atlanta hotel? Well, we've got 115 people who like this and 60 comments. That means everybody who commented on this, it appeared on their wall for all of their friends to see. So, these are the types of things that uh, th that can help you in social media achieve your objectives. And then, you know, being very specific with your target markets. Um, you know, this one here, they've got a, a family reunion board. So you're being very, very specific. Uh, this one here is Discover Atlanta. And so what they've done is they've uh, organized their Pinterest boards by target market so that uh, they provide very valuable content and they really speak to their various target markets. Uh, contests, again, are, are a great way of, uh, of creating some interactivity and creating exposure and getting people to share content. Um, this one here was a, a contest, uh, win a family getaway, and are now for, to win four tickets. And uh, again, you know, 101 people who liked that particular content. Um, so what exactly will be done is going to be very specific to your individual objectives. Uh, the next thing in your strategy is who specifically is going to uh, take that task on? Who specifically is going to, to um, do the techniques to achieve that particular objective? And uh, within the uh, who's going to do it, you know, if you're the lone person in your office that's responsible for social media, it's going to be you, basically. Uh, if, however, you've got a team or you decide that you're going to do some outsourcing, um, you know, then you're going to allocate it to the person that has the capability, the knowledge, the time um, to, to do that particular activity. Now, one of the things that I want to caution you about in this particular area is that, you know, a lot of people say, uh, particularly in the small businesses, you know, I've got, a, I've got a son who's in university, he's on Facebook all the time, I, I'm going to get him to do my Facebook marketing. Well, don't assume that just because somebody is on Facebook all the time that they would be great for, for Facebook marketing. Um, you know, it, it's a whole lot easier to teach somebody who knows marketing, how to market on Facebook, than it is to teach somebody who is on Facebook all the time how to market. Uh, the, the, the marketing is the, is the tough part. Uh, knowing marketing and uh, like I say it's a lot easier to teach somebody who knows uh, general marketing and offline marketing and internet marketing uh, it's a lot easier to teach those individuals how to do social media marketing than it is to to take somebody who's on Facebook all the time and teach them marketing uh, another thing that you definitely want to do is make sure that whoever is doing it separates the business from personal because you can, you know, lose so much time um, by, 
not having a specific, not, not focusing on the business when you're into, uh, in social media. And I'm going to give you a few tips on that at the end of the presentation. And a, another thing is making sure that you've got social media policies and procedures. There are so many uh, horror stories out there about uh, people who just allowed anybody on their staff to participate in social media on behalf of the company. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about setting those social media policies and procedures as well, but very, very important that you have those set uh, in your social media strategy. Um, so now the next thing is uh, we, we've determined uh, what objective, what social media venue, which element, what specifically is going to be done, who's going to do it. Now we need to take a look at how often that particular uh, activity is going to be done. Um, and that's really a, on a on a an objective by objective or technique by technique basis. Um, the next thing that you need to do for each one of these uh, for each one of these is to determine what success looks like. And um, you know, this is something that often doesn't get quantified, and uh, yet it's so important. You know, if your objective is to uh, grow your Facebook fans, as an example, you might have five different techniques that you're going to use to grow your Facebook fans. Well, if you haven't quantified what success looks like, and quantifying what success looks like might be that we want to grow our Facebook fans to, uh, to 5,000, or we want to increase our Facebook fans by, um, you know, 100 a week. If you haven't quantified, it's so difficult to know whether what you're doing is sufficient or whether it's working for you. Uh, because if you if you look at your Facebook fans and you've got, um, you know, a thousand and you spend 15 hours on those techniques and you've only increased your fans by one, well, it's pretty clear that what you're doing is not working to help you achieve that particular objective. Um, but you really need to... Uh, clearly identify and quantify what success would look like because then it's a whole lot easier to uh, do so do a few calculations and then determine what your return on investment is and whether or not uh, the time the techniques that you're using are um, good ones to help you achieve those specific objectives so you need to quantify success uh, you also need to plan on how you're going to measure uh, that particular um, success you know, if the objective is to grow your fans by 100 a week, um, you know you know what your fans are at the beginning of the week. You measure it the same time the following week, and you can see how much you've grown. So that's how you're going to measure. Some other tech, some other objectives that you have, and and different techniques that you're going to use to achieve those objectives. It may be a little bit more difficult. Uh, it might be that you want to uh, sell out on Valentine's Day. And um, so if you do sell out on Valentine's Day, then you need to be able to measure how many of those sales came from your social media efforts. And you might even have tried five different things within social media. You need to be able to narrow it down and determine which techniques really worked for you and which ones didn't so that you can do more of what works and less of what doesn't or drop what doesn't. Um, and, you know, it might involve... Uh, setting up some unique codes. It might involve uh, going into your analytics. It might involve some tracking. So, um, you know, you need to know how you're going to measure uh, to determine whether or not what you're doing is, is working for you. Now, once you've got that social media strategy uh, documented, um, you know, it's, it's kind of an evergreen document um, because there are going to be little tweaks and changes along the way. So you need to monitor and see if what you're doing is working for you. If not, then you want to try and tweak it a little bit and, and see if, uh, if it's just something small that you're doing. You know, if you're doing Facebook advertising, is it that Facebook advertising is not working for you to, to achieve those objectives? Or was it something like you were using the wrong picture in your ad or you didn't have a call to action or you didn't have a border around your ad or you didn't have a like button in the ad or you didn't um, niche the advertising enough so that you had a campaign that you had different text and pictures for each one of the subsets of the target markets that you were going after with that particular campaign. Uh, so, you know, you don't just kind of throw things out if, if it seems like at first blush it's not working. You need to kind of drill down a little bit more and see if you could just do something a little bit different to, uh, to make it a lot more effective. 
Um, so you're always going to be monitoring and tweaking your social media strategy and updating it constantly. And I have thunder and lightning here in Florida, so I hope I'm not going to lose you guys today. <laughs> um, with your social strategy, it's going to be updated on a constant basis for a number of different reasons. I mean, consumers' expectations are constantly changing. Um, things become commonplace. Uh, people get bored. Uh, you know, things work today, and then, uh, you know, whisper campaigns, as an example, might be uh, the the market might be flooded with whisper campaigns over the next month because it's the uh, it's the marketing strategy du jour, and uh, you know a month later then nobody's look nobody's even looking at them anymore. So uh, you know things change constantly. Uh, technology is constantly changing. Um, you know things like uh, I don't know QR codes. You know where everybody jumped on the QR code bandwagon and. And uh, so maybe, you know, that works for a while, but then it gets out of favor and, you know, it's so you need to constantly be looking at uh, what you're doing and changing according to the whims of the of the market. Um, you know, search engine optimization and Google is, is so much looking at social media and the impact that uh, it can have and can play and how they're going to incorporate uh, different things into their search engine algorithm. Um, and they're testing these all the time. So these things are going to change. So if your objective was search engine optimization, um, you know, you're going to change. Those things are going to change over the, uh, you know, several times over the next year. Um, but there are, you know, so many different reasons why you need to constantly uh, monitor and change and update and keep up with what's happening because things are changing very, very quickly uh, in social media. Now, I mentioned that you need to have a social media strategy and, and social media policy and procedures and guidelines for your staff if you're going to have uh, several people participating. And it, it's so important. Um, a few things that you really need to have in place is, you know, one is whether or not they can accept customers and clients uh, as personal friends in, uh, in their social media and their Facebook in particular. Um, you know, there, this is one where it really has, uh, you know, hurt a lot of businesses. You know, let's take a travel agency where um, a customer is dealing with a particular travel agent. Well, they happen to find them on, on Facebook and they ask to be a, a friend of theirs. And it's a personal uh, profile that they're going after. And the travel agent just says, well, it'd be kind of rude to say no. So they just say yes uh, and allow them to become a, a friend. Well, then, you know, if they don't have their privacy settings set um, specifically, then most often the friend can see all of the pictures, all the videos, all those types of things that they post. Well, you know, the travel agent forgets over time that they've got all of these clients in there as friends, and uh, the travel agent is uh, going to, um, oh, I don't know, a... Um, uh, a bridal shower or a stag party for the for the bride uh, that they're in the wedding party. Well, I mean, who knows what kind of videos and and stories and things like that are going to show on the uh, on the on that person's wall? May not be exactly what the owner of the travel agency would want their clients seeing about their staff. So, you know, that's one area that um, you really need to be very clear and have things in place so that. Um, your staff is not put on the spot. It might be that if somebody asks to be a friend, you've got a standard uh, paragraph that they post. They say, look, I'm sure you don't want to be my personal friend. Um, you know, I don't update it very often or what have you. Uh, you want to be a fan of our travel agency uh, Facebook page. So here's the link and love to communicate with you there. So you need to have those things in place. Um, things like, uh, you know, policies and procedures, if, um, if, if there's something in there about the competition, do you um, kind of uh, help fuel the fire? Do you uh, stay away from any, any comments that you see on competition? Uh, what are you allowed to retweet? What are you encouraging them to retweet? And what are you telling them to stay away from? What happens if somebody uh, slams you in the press or says something bad about your business or your destination? How do you respond to that? Uh, you know, there are lots of different policies, procedures, and guidelines that you need to have in place for your, uh, for your staff or anybody that's going to be involved in uh, social media marketing. So with this social media strategy, let's just take a, a look at what happens in an organization. 
you know, first thing you need to do is look and see, do I have the capability, do I have the knowledge to be able to develop this social media strategy? This strategy is going to be uh, so, so important for you to be successful in social media marketing. So if you don't have the capability, it's something that you can outsource. Uh, if you do have the capability, great. By all means, continue on and, and maybe you're going to, to do, develop your own social media strategy. Um, if you've got the capability but you don't have the time to develop the strategy, uh, again, it needs to be done. So you're going to be looking at outsourcing it to a third party that's, you know, that this is their forte. Um, if you've got the capability and the time, then you'll likely develop your own social media strategy. If you don't have either the capability or the time, it's something that you're going to likely uh, outsource to a third party. The, the next piece in being successful online is is doing the social setup and, and doing that properly. You know, you, you just don't get a second chance to make a first impression. And in some instances, you really need to, to do it right. Um, you know, some businesses back in the early days, they set up their Facebook account under the personal profile and may still be doing it today. You know, they may have set up the first name as best and the second and the, the last name is Western, you know, so Best Western. Uh, they're using a, um, a Facebook personal profile for the business purposes. Well, you know, that's the wrong thing to do. Number one, you know, Facebook can shut you down. They find that it's a business operating with a profile. They can just shut you down and that's it. You're gone. All of that work is for naught. You've just disappeared. Um, and there are many other things, many reasons why you'd want to set up a page. There are certain, uh, you know, number restrictions and things that you can and cannot do uh, in a page versus uh, versus a profile. Uh, if you're using Flickr for your uh, photo channel, um, you know, having the custom URL is something that it's set up once and it's something that cannot change. So you really need to know the rules when you're doing this social media setup uh, for all of your different social channels. Um, you know, the graphics, uh, as an example, you really want to make sure that you've got a consistent brand across all channels. Uh, so the graphics that you use on your website, the graphics you use on your blog, the graphics you use in, in your Facebook profile picture, as well as the cover photo, um, the um, graphics that you use in your Twitter background and your YouTube channel should be all consistent so that uh, it, as somebody travels through your various channels, they know it's still you. They know and recognize the brand. Um, you know, things like you're not allowed to uh, use, uh, have contact information in your cover photo in Facebook. Uh, you know, if, if you're found to do those things by doing an overlay, that type of thing, uh, again, you can just be shut down. So it's so important to do this, to do this setup properly. And, you know, in the about section and the, and the areas in your social media that can be indexed by the search engines, uh, again, those are areas that it's so critically important to make sure that you're focusing on your most important keyword phrases so that, um, you know, if somebody uh, goes into, let's say, LinkedIn and does a search on, um, you know, meeting planner, that your profile is going to be uh, one of the ones that comes up uh, close to the top and that doesn't happen by chance it's because of, of how you have set up your profile uh, within LinkedIn that uh, you appear at the at the top there are a number of different things that come into that but if you don't know um, how the search works in the various social media you can't optimize it for search so you know really there are numbers number of different things in doing that setup and having it done properly you know, things like the, the timeline in uh, Facebook, if you've got a, let's say that you're a destination marketing organization, um, you've got a lot of history and uh, it's important to go back into the timeline and edit that timeline and put in some things that go back in history. If you're a, um, you know, if you're a bed and breakfast that has history or if you've got, uh, you know, you're part of Lewis and Clark, or, you know, there are so many things that you want to go back in time, in the timeline, and uh, and edit what you've got there. Um, in the setup as well, uh, I say which tabs, they call them apps every week. We, we're using different terms for different things. Um, but within Facebook, you've got the different, what we used to call tabs, now we call apps, that you can set up so that you can have 
um, great content available to your uh, to anybody who visits you on Facebook. Um, even things like the thumbnails that you use, the graphics that you use in those apps or tabs uh, should be custom developed so that it really can stand out and grab people's attention. Um, now with the, um, with the uh, apps, it's amazing how few people actually are using these apps to their advantage. Um, you can have iframes now, and iframes are basically where um, under an app or under a tab, uh, you can have an iframe that will show any page that you've got on the web uh, through your Facebook. And I'm going to show you a couple of examples of this. Um, also in these apps, um, there are feeds. So you can have an Instagram feed or you can have your, uh, your Twitter feed appear right within your, uh, your Facebook. So it's, um, and selling through iframes is, is an important one that a lot of people don't realize that they can do. Uh, and one that, that I think is really important because um, if you don't use the iframe to sell within Facebook, then anybody who visits you on Facebook, you've got to go that extra step to get them out to your website to be able to make that purchase. Um, and that's not a very easy thing to have happen. So, um, you know, again, wherever possible, use these iframes to your advantage. And this is all part of the setup that you'll have in, uh, in Facebook. Um, you know, here's, the, here's uh, just one example that I'm talking about the taps and the abs, uh, the tabs and the apps. Use the term, I use the term interchangeably. So what we've got here is this uh, Lake Lanier Islands, and they've got contests, concerts, and specials. Uh, so these are very graphically pleasing, and people know exactly what they can access uh, through these various tabs, and these are custom graphics. Um, here's an example of Best Western River North, and this is an iframe. So what they've done is they have uh, developed a page which probably is not accessible to anybody over the web, if through their website, uh, but it is part of their website, just not accessible through any link. And uh, they've set this up so that they can do an iframe and have the reservation system right there and accessible through their Facebook page. So here, this one page, they've got like our page, a call to action, so they're encouraging people uh, to become uh, you know, a person who likes or a fan of the page. Uh, they've got sign up today where you can just put in the email address and join now. So they've got permission marketing in this, uh, in, on this one page. And then find a room so you can actually uh, go and make a reservation at Best Western through this particular app or tab. But again, it's done by way of an iframe. Um, anybody who's got a, a downloadable app, this can be um, accessible again through, uh, through an app in your Facebook page. And if it's something that you want to have happen, something that's going to give you more, uh, help you do more business, uh, certainly something that should be encouraged. Um, you know, having your uh, having your various tabs, um, you can choose the order with some of these. Uh, but you know, when you've got Pinterest or an Instagram feed, these are uh, things that would be of interest to anybody visiting your page, and when they can see what you've got, um, you know, they're much more likely to be able to. Uh, click through to the Instagram feed or your Pinterest and or the sweepstakes and enter your contest. Uh, it's going to create some uh, engagement on your uh, on your Facebook page. You know, here again is another. This is a contest. Um, it's a contest that is leveraged. The contest is within Facebook, but uh, they've got here like our page and then enter to win. So they've got the contest there to achieve the objective of growing their fans so you've got to like the page before you can enter to win um, so you know you just get very strategic about um, about the content that you've got and look at this you know check back every Wednesday until August 29th so there's a way of generating repeat visits to your Facebook page and like I say there are lots of great um, technologies out there now where you can Set it up once and just let it run. You can provide a feed for your Instagram, for your uh, for Flickr, for YouTube, for Twitter, um, you know, for almost anything that you're doing. Uh, you can create a feed so that you set it up once and then you let it run by itself. Uh, here's another example of, um, you know, permission marketing. Sign up for our e-newsletter. It's within Facebook. 
um, but it's permission marketing, so uh, done through an app or through an iframe. Um, so your setup is so, so very important to help you achieve your objectives, and every one of your social media channels uh, it has to be set up properly. There are rules and things that you can do, things that you're not allowed to do, things that you can do that uh, that will help you achieve your objectives. Um, you know, with YouTube, you can have your uh, having choosing which is your featured video that's going to appear when somebody goes into your channel, how you get people to subscribe so they're notified whenever you add a new video. These types of things are all so important to help you uh, achieve your objectives in your in your social media. You know, things right down to the first words that you use in the description on every single video because people get to see the first line or two. So you don't want to waste those particular words of text. So you need to have kind of policies set up for every uh, video that you upload to your YouTube channel. And, you know, they're, the setup for every single one of your social media has different... Um, different repercussions and, and things that you should do to set things up properly. Um, so it's got to be part of your part of your strategy. Uh, now, in doing the social media setup, if you know all of these things that I'm talking about and know you know how to do these setups properly to help you achieve all of your objectives, and if you've got the time to do it, hey, do that setup yourself. But you know, if you don't realize the opportunities that you've got by setting up your social media properly, then you want to look at outsourcing it to somebody who really does know those things. Um, and if you don't have the time, again, it's something that you want to outsource to somebody who really knows what they're doing. Um, it's not something that you'd say, hey, you use Facebook, will you set it up for us? Uh, you really need to use somebody who does uh, social media um, set up and social media management on an ongoing basis, somebody who's got this expertise clearly. So that's the social media setup piece. And then the last piece is uh, the ongoing day-to-day -day management of your social media. And, you know, if you've, um, if you've got your social media strategy and your social media setup done properly, the day-to-day -day management is basically following what's in your strategy because you've already in your strategy said, here are my objectives Here's what's going to be done. Here's, going, here's who's going to do it. Here's how often it's going to be done. Here's our uh, success. Here's, here's our success number. We're going to quantify what we're looking for, and here's how we're going to measure. So you're basically, your social media management is putting into play what you've got in your strategy. Now, you may or may not have this capability or this time. Now, here's where we get into a little bit more um, a few extra layers in this. You know, if you don't have the capability and you don't necessarily want to outsource it, you want to learn how to do this thing, um, then there are ways that you can uh, learn this over time. And I'm going to show you a couple of ways that that can happen. Um, if you don't have the time, basically you're going to have to outsource it to somebody else if you've got the, if you've got the money. So if you've, if you've got the capability and you've got the time, you're basically going to do the social media management yourself. If you don't have the time, you're going to outsource it. If you don't have the capability but you want to learn, then you will take a period of time and you will learn, um, and then you will do more and more of the social media management yourself. Let's take a little look. Like I said, with the social media management, um, if you've got your strategy done properly, you're just going to be following that strategy and implementing that particular strategy. Um, you need to be so careful, though, of uh, social networking versus social not working. Uh, and that is where you really need to focus on the business side of social media when, you are, uh, when you're doing your social media um, marketing. So many people get into social media and they say, um, oh, I'm just going to get in and do a few posts in Facebook and do a few tweets and, and, uh, and get out and get, have my business social media marketing done for the day. And then they happen to look at their own page or their own profile, and they see a few posts, they're watching a few videos, they're following a few links, the next thing, a couple of hours have gone by, and they've wasted a lot of time. So you really want to separate your business and your personal use of, uh, of social media. When you're doing your social media marketing for your business, uh, you should just focus on that. And I'm going to give you a few tips on, on doing that. Um, you, you can't... Um, 
one of the things that I'm going to tell you to do is kind of uh, define how much time you're going to spend uh, because if it's only 25% of your job, uh, you need to be very, very cognizant of the time that you that you use when you're in your social media marketing. Um, and so, you know, if you're saying I'm going to spend two hours a day in social media marketing, you can't allocate all two hours to specific activities because there are going to be things that happen and that just pop up. You know, there's going to be a comment that's made about your business that you need to respond to that wasn't in the two-hour time allotment. Um, there are going to be, you know, questions that are asked or comments that are made that you really need to respond to in a timely fashion. So you can't allocate 100% of the time uh, that you're at, that you're devoting to social media marketing to specific activities. You got to have it a little bit loose. Um, you also need to allow some time to explore and to uh, go and check out and see what the competition is doing. And I use the term competition very loosely. Uh, the competition would be the leaders in your industry. And you need to go and see what these leaders are doing uh, to see if there are some new things that they're doing or so, some techniques that they're doing and using that could help you achieve your objectives faster, easier, and with less money. So you do need to, to have a little bit of time to play around in there. So don't allocate 100% of the hours um, you know, that you're devoting to social media marketing. Uh, don't allocate it down to the minute. Um, a few tips on how you can make the most of the time that you do allocate. One is, you know, turn off the phone and turn off the email. Uh, when you're doing social media marketing and that little email is popping up all the time and you say, oh shoot, they're looking for that, I better do that right away. Then you're popping in and out of your social media and, you know, you're being less effective with the time that you do have available. So, you know, close your email. Uh, turn down the volume on the voice or let, let your telephone go to voicemail and really focus. If you've got 25% of your time and you're spending, uh, you know, an hour and a half today on social media, get the most of that hour and a half that, you, that you've allocated. Um, what you might choose to do is allocate different activities to a, to a particular time of the day or day of the week. Um, that is going to be very effective for you. If, um, you know, it, it might even be that you're doing some of this work in the evening when uh, you're away from business, um, you know, and that gives you a couple of hours off on Friday afternoon if your boss will allow it. Um, but you can get in and do, do some scheduled uh, posts and those types of things. And I'll show you a bit more about that, um, you know, in the evenings, or you might do it on a day that's, that's relatively slow for you. Or if, if early mornings are not too busy because of time zone uh, differences, then you know think about when you're going to do these activities so that you can get the most uh, done in a short period of time. And then then schedule schedule your social media marketing to specific uh, routines. You know it might be that you do it uh, first thing in the morning and last thing in the afternoon, or it might be that you um, you know do it first thing in the morning. You just do a quick monitoring at lunchtime. Uh, or first thing in the afternoon after lunch, um, so that you know you've got specific set times that you do your social media activities. <clears throat> and if you've allocated, um, you know, two hours, just spend two hours. Uh, know what you can and cannot get done. So set your uh, set your timer, set your little alarm, so that uh, if you're going to spend an hour and a half, to, uh, you know, right now doing your social media marketing. Um, set your alarm so that you do nothing but until the alarm goes off and then um, and then you know you know how much you can get done in that hour and a half I I don't know for some reason I think I read it somewhere about 12 minute increments and uh, I really like setting my alarm for 12 minutes because it's amazing what you can get done in 12 minutes when you know you only have 12 minutes so if that works for you try it otherwise just uh, set your alarm for the amount of time that, that you have set. And then, you know, stick to your schedule, stick to your time limits, um, and, uh, and make the most of what you've got. And, and again, everything that you do, you're, it's, it's going to be a balancing act between uh, the amount of time that you've got, the capability, the expertise that you have, and the budget that you have. Different activities are going to require uh, different amounts. Um, in your social media, Use rich media whenever possible. Um, just notice the next time that you're uh, in Facebook. 
you gravitate, if you, if you go into your personal profile, you will gravitate towards any video, any photo that's there. Any text, it's any time that it's just text, uh, it's very easy to overlook it. Uh, so, you know, the, the rich media grabs attention. So use that in your social media wherever possible. Um, use, uh, use the automation, use the uh, scheduling. Um, you can do that a number of different ways. You can use the software TweetDeck, uh, Hootsuite, Seismic. These are very, very popular social media management tools. Uh, know them, use them. Uh, so that you can get in and schedule things for the next month or the next six months, if you like. Um, you know, if you know that you're going to have a photo contest and it's going to be every single week, and you've got a lot of pictures that you can use for that photo contest, it might be, you know, that they've got to do a caption or something. You can set up the whole year's um, photo caption contest uh, within one of these within one of these tools. Um, you know, on a down day. So think about how you can automate. Um, and then also within Facebook as well, you can go in and uh, put in a comment and then you can schedule it for later. It'll ask you what year, what month, what day, what time. And uh, so you can schedule right within Facebook uh, now any comments that you're going to make on your page. So make sure that you use these tools wherever possible. And again, like I say, you know, uh, Hootsuite, TweetDeck, Seismic all provide great opportunity for you to get in and do some scheduling for uh, for future. Now, you can pre-schedule some, but you definitely can't uh, pre-schedule all of your posts. And and it's very important that you don't set and forget. You know, it's it's easy to set those posts in uh, in uh, Hootsuite or TweetDeck as an example, but you need to monitor it. Um, Take a look and see what posts you've got for the next week. Don't just set it and let it go. Uh, this is where you run into, into some trouble. Uh, because things happen in your area, you know, whether it's hurricane, whether it's weather, whether it's, uh, you know, something has happened at a, uh, at a school in your, in your area. Um, you know, there are things that you really need to pay attention to and you need to be very sensitive of. So even if you do schedule things, you need to go and take a look at the beginning of the day in terms of what's already in the schedule and are those still appropriate? Um, should you replace it with something else? Um, or if it's inappropriate given the circumstances, whether it's weather or something that's happening in your particular town, um, you know, then you can eliminate something before, it, uh, before it's made public. Um, another thing that you want to do is pay attention to your analytics. Um, see what's working for you and what's not. See what uh, time of the day works for most people. See what uh, day of the week is working and that you're getting the most response so that you can kind of reschedule some of the things that you've got, uh, that you've got set up to go automatic uh, and schedule those right posts at the right time. Um, be very careful of uh, using the same content that you've got on your Facebook wall uh, and you're also tweeting it, and it's also on your blog, and it's also in your profile in LinkedIn. You know, uh, for most content, you're going to want to diversify different times, use different words, uh, schedule it a little bit apart, uh, because somebody who is um, uh, following you on Twitter and is also a, uh, somebody who likes you on Facebook, they don't want to see the same thing at the same time. So you might want to just you know, diversify a little, whether it's time-wise or the text that you use or the method that you use across the different venues. Um, another thing that can help you save some time is when you're doing your planning for your social media, um, have a calendar. And then, you know, you can fill in a lot of that calendar with uh, different uh, events that are happening in your area or that you have planned. Um, you will look at different holidays, so Valentine's and Christmas and Easter and Hanukkah and uh, God knows what, you, that you can have specific strategic posts around specific days and holidays and things like that. Um, where you can provide great content would be um, having specific content on specific days, so having Tuesday trivia. Uh, or having a uh, you know a photo caption contest that's every Thursday, and that allows you to have some really great content um, that you can plan for the whole year in advance or plan six months in advance um, by using these uh, social media tools. Um, 
again, when you've got a calendar and you can see what types of things you're posting on different days of the week, um, you can just take a look on Friday the week prior and see where you've got some blanks in your calendar, where you've got some blanks in your uh, social media content that need to be filled. And then you can plan on what you're going to put in there in the following week. So if you know that you're posting to your Facebook wall uh, twice a day and you look at your calendar and you've got nothing there for Wednesday, um, then Wednesday is just a few days away. You're going to want to figure out what you're going to post on that particular day by looking at the calendar. Um, another thing that you can do is if you've got a few people in your, uh, in your organization, uh, set up a Google Docs for your calendar. Um, and look at some collaborative content, you know, do some brainstorming um, and get people that whenever they see something that might be an appropriate post for you, um, then they put it into this Google Doc. Sometimes they'll put it directly into a calendar as a suggestion. Sometimes they'll just put it into a, a file of future content. But this way, everybody can be sharing that Google Doc, no matter where they are, when they are, and they can be adding um, you know, some possible content to your social media marketing. If you're a destination marketing organization, one of the things that you can do is, you know, send an email out to your industry or your team. Hey, anything going on that you want us to promote for you in, uh, you know, in the next week or the next month? Um, if you're, you know, if you're a little slow on content or if you want to uh, partner with your industry to market uh, their events and their activities. Um, and then you can have a, a file for any time stuff. Uh, it, again, it can be a Google Doc, but you know, you see a funny picture or there's a, a story written about your destination or about your business. Um, you know, it can be anything really that if you keep your eyes open to things that might be considered good content or you see you've got a, a picture that might be great for your photo caption contest, you know, you can just throw it up into your, into your Google Doc. Um, so, you know, having those files, and I'm talking digital files, uh, that can be great for any time. Uh, social media monitoring, uh, use your Google Alerts and your social mentions and those types of tools uh, because there you're going to see when you need to respond to, um, to some tweets or some posts uh, that are about you, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. If it's good, you want to say thanks. If it's bad, you want to, you, you know, you want to react to it. Um, photo contests are, are a great type of content because you can leverage those nine ways, uh, nine ways to Sunday. If you're doing a video, then use a product called OneLoad because uh, you can set up your various video channels, you know, whether it's uh, Blip TV, uh, YouTube, um, Vimeo, whatever, whatever channels you're using. You set them up in OneLoad, and then when you upload your video to OneLoad, you put the title and the description and the tags in there once, and then it sends all that information out to your various channels. So it just saves you time over time. Um, another great little tool is called Summify, and I'm just going to show you this video. They say it better than I do. John is a busy web developer who wants to stay up to date with the latest news, trends, and stories from his friends, family, and his favorite blogs. To be in the know, John follows people on Twitter, is subscribed to a bunch of tech blogs, and checks Facebook on his breaks. Yeah, right. At the beginning, it was easy to check all of these places, but now that he follows 100 people on Twitter, is subscribed to more than 30 blogs, and has 200 friends on Facebook, it's just impossible to read everything. There's too much info in too many places and not enough time in the day. And worst of all, most of the content is garbage. John is getting frustrated. How can he stay in the loop and still be productive? Say hello to Summify. Summify automatically identifies the important news stories for you across all of your networks so you can read the content that really matters. How? Summify analyzes all of your news and looks at many factors to determine which news stories are the most important. For example, news that has been shared, liked, and retweeted a lot by your friends are considered more important. It also understands your interests by learning from your reading history. Now, with Summify, John can stay informed with the best content and still be productive. John is happy, John is informed, and John is in the loop. Summify, stay in the loop. So these types of tools are absolutely fantastic for, uh, you know, if you're following your, uh, your industry or your geographic location, it can provide you with really, really great content that you can then use as content in your social media, whether you're going to make a post about it or whether you're going to retweet somebody else's uh, tweet, those types of things. Uh, it can give you access to, the, um, uh, to content that is really gaining uh, momentum and going viral. Um, 
And then, you know, if you don't have the capability and you want to learn, there's so many ways that you can do it. Uh, attending webinars like this or any of the uh, webinars that we've got on eLearning U uh, to help you with uh, social media management, uh, social media marketing, uh, articles, groups. There's so many places online that you can learn how to do your social media marketing effectively. Um, go out and reverse engineer the, the leaders in your competition, the leaders in your industry, and see what they're doing. Because uh, success leaves traces and, uh, you know, see what's working for others and see if you can incorporate those uh, in your own techniques. Um, offline, um, if you find a good social media uh, manager, I know uh, Kara, one of my co-deans, has a social media management company called uh, Miss Mediosa. And one of the things that she does for her clients that are uh, where she might develop the social media strategy and they want to learn how to implement it themselves uh, she does a, a thing called shadowing, where she sets up an online meeting, much like you're attending today, and uh, the people in the business that are wanting to be trained get to see exactly what she's doing and how she's setting up the social media, uh, you know, in Hootsuite or TweetDeck, uh, what she's doing online to do that Facebook ad for the company, and they can see every keystroke, everything that she does. And uh, then over time, when they become more comfortable with it, uh, the roles reverse. And they, do, they go, come into the online meeting, and Kara watches what they're doing and gives them advice on, uh, yes, you're doing that right, that's perfect, now you know how to do that. Or, uh, no, don't, don't go there, just move up a little bit, go to this particular area, uh, change your comment to this, that, the other, make sure that this is a link and she can give them advice. So it basically is uh, what they call shadowing. So you can learn how to do social media marketing uh, by following the, following the experts. Um, there are also all kinds of classes that you can take at uh, community college and online and, and all kinds of different places. So if you want to learn, uh, there are more than enough tools and ways that you can uh, learn how to do the uh, social media management yourself. So that brings us to the end of my program. A social media is 25% of my job, help. Hopefully I've put things into perspective for you that you really have three areas that you've got to focus on. One being the strategy, a second being the setup, and the third being the day-to-day -day management. And hopefully uh, in that last part I've given you some uh, good you know, tips, techniques, resources to help you with that social media management to help you save uh, sometime with your, uh, when you only have 25%, you've got to maximize every single minute. So thank you all for participating today. Kara. Thank you so much, Susan. That was a great session. Uh, there's so much to do when it comes to social media, so hopefully some of these time-saving tips will help our attendees make the best use of their time when it comes to Facebook and Twitter and any other social networks that they're using. Uh, before I move to Q&A, there are a few things I want to mention. First of all, you will all be seeing a survey on your screen after we finish up today. Please fill this out with your feedback on today's webinar for a chance to win a copy of Susan's book, 101 Ways to Promote Your Website. We will announce the winner in next week's session and also contact the winner by email. Also next week, we will be hearing from Heather Lutzi on Thumbnomics, the essential business roadmap to social media and mobile marketing. So we hope that all of you can join us for that session next week as well. Um, if you have any topics you'd like to see in our upcoming sessions, please be sure to mention them in our survey or let us know on Facebook at facebook.com slash elearningyou. So now we'll get straight to the Q&A period with Susan. Uh, for those of you who haven't attended here before, the way that this works is if you have a question, you can type it into the text area on your screen. Or if you have a microphone set up and you would like to ask your question to Susan directly, just hit the, ra uh, the raise hand button on your screen and I'll be able to unmute you so that you can speak to Susan. I do have a number of text questions here for you already, Susan. The first one is, um, what are the best ways to make our traditional marketing and our social media efforts work together? Wow. Um, well, with that, it's, it's going to really depend on what, what the particular objective was. Um, but, it, you know, it's like I said, it's so important to uh, don't just assume that everything is going to be done via social media. If you can achieve some of your objectives, particularly if you're selling through your website and not through your social media, um, then the traditional techniques of getting people to uh, your website to be able to make that to do that conversion and turn them into a, a customer uh, would be the more direct route. 
if your if your objective is more about um, you know increasing exposure and getting more people, then social media is oftentimes the better venue. But um, you know, quite often with every objective, you can look at uh, as you're going through these objectives. You can just have a little note that okay, how can I achieve this uh, through traditional? And how can I achieve it through social media? And look at how you might be able to um, to do a little bit of both. And that way, then you can look at your uh, look at your measurement at the end of the day and see which one was more effective for you. Uh, sometimes you'll continue to do both, and sometimes you'll tend to focus either more on social or more on the traditional. Okay, great. The next question that's here is: In your experience, what time of day seems to be most effective for posting? You know, again, that's going to be different for for every business that has different target markets. But uh, it seems that if you are a business to consumer, uh, the early evening hours tend to be uh, tend to be very effective. But uh, you can use your uh, you know your insights and your different analytics within the various social media channels and as well your Google Analytics uh, to see when your target market is um, you know is participating more. Kara, some of these questions you can answer uh, much better than I can because, you know, this is your forte, the uh, social media marketing. So anytime I'm answering a question, feel free to, to, uh, to jump in with, with your comments as well. Sure, I'll give another comment on that question there about uh, finding the best time of day. Um, I would suggest uh, trying to do this on a manual process if you can because that way it's going to be the most accurate and the most effective. You're looking for a really quick way to find, um, you know, the time of day that most of your Twitter followers are online. I would recommend using a uh, Google Chrome browser extension called Social Pro. Um, it's free to use. You just sign up with your Twitter account, and there's actually a report that it will generate for you to tell you what time your Twitter followers are most active, and, and that'll spit out a couple of different time ranges that. Uh, that would be best to post based on the, uh, the time zones of your followers. But um, I also recommend doing it manually, taking a look at uh, on Facebook, on every post you can see how many people have viewed the post and you can obviously see how many people have commented and liked and shared. So I would uh, recommend keeping track for about a month, um, looking at what times you're posting, try a bunch of different times and uh, Look at which ones are getting the best response and the most views, and uh, try to stick to those times in the future. And the next question that's here, Susan, is um, actually someone asking if they can get a copy of the information. So um, I'll, I can answer that one for you. If uh, if anybody would like a copy of the slides, just send me an email, Kara at eLearningU. That's K A R A at eLearningU.com, and uh, I will send you over a PDF version of the uh, slides from today's session. Uh, the next question is, you mentioned Instagram a few times in this webinar. We post our photos to Facebook, but do you recommend setting up an Instagram account and posting them on there as well? Uh, you know, it really, uh, it really depends on, uh, on your objectives and what you're doing with, uh, with Instagram. Um, you know, unless you've got a strategy and a plan, um, you know, you, you don't just have a, uh, an Instagram account because it's it's the thing to do. You think about um, what objectives the Instagram uh, is going to help you achieve, and then that will answer uh, whether or not you even incorporate it in, and do a feed through uh, through Facebook. Kara, do you have okay, anything to add to that? Um, no, I think that's that's uh, pretty appropriate. I mean, if you have a lot of time and uh, you want to test out Instagram, you could always set up an account and see what kind of exposure and response your, your photos are getting. But um, you also want to check out who your target markets are and whether or not they're even present on Instagram because if, if nobody that you're trying to reach is on the network, then there's not going to be a lot of the point in spending a lot of extra time on their posting photos. So, yeah, yeah I, I would agree with what and it, and it, it really, you know, it goes back to your strategy. You know, if you're, let's say that you're um, a restaurant or you've got a restaurant in your hotel and you've got a daily special, then why not uh, take a photo of your daily special and then use your Instagram channel so that everybody can see what today's special is. You know, they know that uh, that they can go and take a look and see what, uh, you know, what the special is. So 
you know, it really depends on, um, on why you're doing what you're doing. And you can come up with uh, strategies and just determine whether or not, um, you know, it's, it's a, an appropriate um, social media tool for you to use to achieve that particular objective. You don't just do it because everybody's doing it. Uh, there's just two questions left here, so if anybody else has any other questions, uh, feel free to take them in quickly, or if you think of something after the session, feel free to visit us on Facebook at facebook.com slash elearningu, and uh, we will be sure to get the question answered for you. So the second last question that's here is, how can we track whether or not new sales are coming from social media? Oh, they're, you know, they're, it depends on how your, how your sales are set up. I mean, it could be that... Um, you have a uh, you know a special code for fans that um, they can use a particular code to get either you know a gift or free shipping or uh, a discount or you know if it's a restaurant then it's that they get a free dessert when they use um, you know when they use that code or the whisper. There, so there are many different techniques that you will use once you know what your objective is and once you know what you want to measure. Then generally. Uh, you can figure out what technology or what technique to use to be able to separate out uh, the sales that come from a particular social media campaign versus uh, versus another. Sometimes you're going to be using your, your analytics. Sometimes you're going to be using um, maybe a, a unique photo that you'll be able to determine, um, you know, was used. Sometimes it's going to be a coupon code. But, you know, once you once you know that you want to be able to measure that, generally you'll be able to figure out how to make that happen. All right, and the last question that's here is, is there a minimum acceptable amount of time that we should be dedicating to social media each week? Um, well, you know, once you get down to a, a very small number of hours, then, um, you know, you're not going to be able to do too much. It really depends on how many channels you are participating in. I mean, if you're participating in uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, Pinterest, um, Twitter, Flickr, you know, and you're only spending an hour a week, you're really not doing justice to any of those channels. Uh, so you really need to uh, look at the amount of time that you have and then based upon the amount of time that you're going to allocate to your social media, from there, then you determine how many different channels you're going to participate in so that you can be effective in those channels, so that you can do what you do do well. Uh, you know, hesitate to say go big or stay home, but if you're going to, if, you've, if your criteria is that you have a, a set number of hours that, you're, that you can devote to social media, then look at how you can be most effective uh, given that time, whether it is in reducing the number of channels that you participate in or uh, automating the process or, um, you know, sometimes if you've got a bit of a budget, you can allocate uh, some of the, the social media management to an outside, uh, to an outside organization. But, um, Carrie, you can probably say in terms of number of hours, what would, uh, you know, what would be the minimum? Um, well, I would agree it's going to be different for every single company and, and really going to depend on what you're doing on all those different networks and um, how many networks you're on. But uh, I would really say that one of the biggest problems that I see is that a lot of people will dedicate enough time to get some content thrown out there, but they really don't dedicate any time to building their fans and followers and making sure they've got targeted fans and followers on all of their accounts. And also um, being social with everybody, you know, retweeting other people's content, sharing some content on Facebook, um, thanking people for their likes or their comments or their retweets and those sorts of things. Um, you know, it's not all about posting. A lot of those other things with the ongoing management gets overlooked. And another major one is uh, the actual metrics on a, on a regular basis. You should be measuring uh, your progress every week or every month at a bare minimum. So, um, you know... I would say at a bare minimum, you're going to want to put an hour a day towards these types of things. Um, you know, maybe you can spread that out differently throughout the week if it's not an hour every single day. But, um, you know, you need to have those, uh, those online reputation management uh, processes in place so that you do get alerts when people are retweeting you or, or writing on your wall so that you can quickly log in and thank somebody or respond to their comments or... Um, you know, be social and, and respond. That's that's the whole point of being on there. You know, if you just have it to throw some content up there and, and you're not available to communicate with people, then um, 
you know, a lot of the time you'll be missing the point. So, uh, so just keep in mind all the different um, components when it comes to social media in addition to the posting and uh, make sure that you have enough time to do all of those things. If you don't, certainly look at outsourcing if you have it in your budget um, because you can, you can be the one that focuses on all of the content and making sure that things are said exactly the way you would like them to be said, but have somebody else um, on, on the outside uh, building your fans on a regular basis and retweeting relevant content and those sorts of things. So just find a way to, uh, to work with what schedule and budget you have available to get, get the most exposure and the most, um, the most responding and engagement with the fans that you can. Good answer. <laughs> um, and I, I noticed that uh, Caitlin is asking uh, you to, to spell the email for the slides. That's yeah, I actually sent it by text, but I can read it again just in case anybody else needs some, uh, needs, needs the email again. It's Kara, K-A-R-A, -A, at elearningyou.com. So just elearningyou.com. And that's all of the questions that we have for today. So thank you again, Susan, for a great session. And again, everybody, uh, we hope to see you next week for Thumbonomics, the essential business roadmap to social media and mobile market marketing. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank you all. Bye-bye. The organizer has ended the session.